we're back. Boxio G here with Faz, the leader of the Eminent Mythic Plus team. First cup is done. What did you expect from the cheekiness that came from MDI? Yeah, what's up, everyone? Um, yeah, so the level of cheekiness that we saw, or cheesiness, whatever you want to call it, we saw from MDI this week, uh, it, it kind of blew me away. I mean, our last video, we talked a lot about the tier list, and we made a list off of the live meta like what we see on live what we see in lfg what we see pushing high keys there and what you know people want what what is good or what people deem good right um but yeah mdi came and boy i mean the our dps like the dps was, was pretty spot on um we didn't really we weren't too far off on that but the uh if, if you did watch the mdi you'll you'll notice that not a single shaman nor a single paladin was played Oh, there was one. One paladin? One paladin. Yes. Okay, I guess I missed that game. I was pushing keys at the same time that I was watching the MDI, so I guess I missed that. But one, one paladin was played. Um, every single top tier team, they they did this cheeky, dis priest, fucking fire mage, PI combustion strat, which is absolutely disgusting. You know, you have Dr. J doing close to 70k DPS on these pools that they're doing in the MDI, and it's it's just absurd right like i'm not gonna lie was not expecting that not one bit due to the fact that i've run with a lot of disc priests and you know to be fair all these tournament player tournament competitors are are like you know they're top tier players right they, they've been top tier for a long time so you know playing a disc priest to the level that you need to to push high keys is something that they're all capable of but you don't really find too much on live right disc priest is one of those healers that have a very high skill cap to be able to you know push high contact especially mythic plus right so seeing that strat was uh was definitely something i was not expecting no not one bit were you shocked about how big the pulls were even though there's a target cap <sighs> well with the fire mage combustion pi strat once literally the first dungeon that we saw was echo uh, I forgot what team they were playing, but it was Echo, who is, you know, the old, you know, Method EU team, um, the old Wonder Bar team who, you know, multiple, they, they, they won BlizzCon a few times, they won multiple tournament cups in the past MDIs, uh, they're now known as Echo, but the first, the very first dungeon we saw was Halls of Atonement, and the first pool we saw of the first dungeon of the MDI was the first shard with the entire right side. Like the entire right side. All into that little room. You have double shards. You have all these hound mas the hound masters. You have the, the gargans. You have the little groundskeepers. You have all of this. And then that's when you see the big PI mage combustion strat. And it was you know when we sit here and we talked last video about oh the pools are not going to be that big due to target capping and it's going to be slower w yet again was a giant slap in the face boy were we completely wrong now I, I won't say completely wrong due to the fact there are some dungeons like sanguine depths for example you didn't see that right there's no massive pools in sanguine depths because the ads in sanguine depths are nasty they're nasty they're not like those those ads you know it pulling big in that dungeon is very 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 scary but halls of atonement on the other hand there's not a lot of kicks that need to go out right there's not a lot of ads that you know if you miss a kick that's gg right it's more of you know think of halls of atonement as like a tall desire right from from bfa they, they're treating it the same way and that's why you saw echo do four pulls four pulls dead bosses <laughs> that's it that's that was the dungeon their first dungeon of the cup was a 14 minute 37 second halls of atonement it was disgusting it was absolutely disgusting but yes it was uh it was a little bit of both we got a little bit of the old mdi with uh, some of the dungeons like like sanguine depths that were just slower right they, they were they were slower because you know of the dungeon itself just the way it's built the ads and you know how you have to work your way around it it's just slower so think of think of uh sanguine depths like king's rest right king's rest was the same way to where it was just a slower dungeon 
due to the fact that there wasn't a lot of areas to just pull everything and blast everything down. You had to kind of work your way through. So we got a little bit of both. All in all, were you happy with the outcome, how it changed from BFA to Shadowlands? Um, yes and no. Um, yes, because the way that some of the dungeons work and the things are going to be slower, they're going to have to do more, to, you know, more strategic stuff instead of just pull everything and let's hope it dies before we do. Um, and no, in a sense that, you know, Blizzard has allowed the MDI to come up with really, really cheesy stuff to win. And um, I'm not a fan of cheesing to win. Never have been. Don't like it. Right? I get it. It's tournaments. You're going to do whatever you want to win. I understand that mindset. But at the same time, like, like how cheesy do you want to go? Are you the, are you the freaking Cheetos little tiger, man? Like, like oh, how cheesy do you want to do it? And, oh, well, okay, there's that. And... So with, with that being said, hey, I'm happy that the MDI is going in that direction um, where it's it's a little slower in some things. They have to think about things a little more. I am happy about that, but not happy that they're allow, they allow them to come up. Because like, how do you not, as Blizzard, how do you not know? How do you not know that, oh, this priest PI or a priest PI plus a fire mage equals 80k DPS on pools? Like your game designers, right? Like you know, how are you not? How do you not know that that's going to come, right? So, you know, well, yeah. It is their first cup. There's a lot of fluke with it, right? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll later talk about that in this video. And just another question for you: as a team going into the MDI, what did you take away from the first cup? Um, that, I, and I know what, I've said this several times throughout this video, but um, cheese wins tournaments, right? You know, so that's that's just that's how it is. Cheese wins tournaments, and I I don't mind it because again, like tournament play, you know, do anything that you need to do to win. But you know, we have a lot of we have a lot of strategic stuff that we're gonna have to uh, go over once we're on the tournament realm and we start we start you know actually practicing for uh, for these time trials and stuff like that. So right on. Uh, what were you most shocked about coming or er, after seeing the MDI? Uh, pride skips. How, skips. yeah, how Blizzard again allowed that to be a thing going into the first MDI tournament? I mean, if you watch a lot of the the high end plus, uh, you know, the non competitors on Twitch, you know, like Growl and like Nerf Tank, like Elsmere, these guys that just they're you know big staples in the in the M plus community but they just don't compete anymore um they all talked about it all weekend uh, how blizzard allowed that to happen right to allow teams to be able to completely skip an entire seasonal affix this is this is affix that it's that's supposed to define this season the dungeons are supposed to be worked around this affix and you have tournament players that said, fuck your affix. We're just not going to do it. We're just not going to deal with it at all. Like, it, it was kind of the same in BFA with the Miss Weaver pulling the last four bosses with the Awakening and just running around the whole dungeon and snapping back. It's similar. Sort of. But that's still, the thing is, is if you don't know what you're doing and you're distancing and getting healing aggro and you're pathing and knowing how far you can get, it still took skill to do that. It doesn't take skill to pull pride, run away, and shadow meld. At that point, you're using a mechanic to cheese the game and cheese an affix, right? You're, it's not taking skill to skip a, a, an entire seasonal affix. That, like this shouldn't be a thing. There should there was I don't know how many dungeons where we watched them not like literally all four pridefuls that you get in a dungeon. Teams would just completely they would get it. They would literally use mobility to get away, go to a little corner, shadow meld it off, and then just say bye, see you later, and just leave it there, like it didn't exist. That that needs that. We all know that's not going to be a thing going to the next MDI Cup. By all means, if Blizzard doesn't fix that, then I swear on, I will I will literally switch to Alliance and roll Night Elf just so I can do that as well. 
and it works out you are a vengeance demon hunter yeah yeah that's true i am a demon hunter and my other class is a monk so i could play night elf or both so yeah when i was talking about most shocked i was referring to like the outlier so what we saw in the mdi we saw a guardian druid we also saw the outlaw rogue doing the snapping mechanic as well as doing a stupid amount of dps with the one dungeon in bastion uh Can yeah speak to that yes yeah, so with with that being said the whole uh seeing a guardian druid wasn't was was definitely something that i was super shocked about i put that at the very bottom uh due to right now on live you just they're just not great right like they just they're not good because you don't have all the stuff that you get to have on tournament realm right like you don't have all the gear optimization you don't have all the conduits right and you know what i'm saying so it's like with the one thrash legendary bears are you know you know that i don't mind that right maybe you should have put bear bear in the situational because the way that they use bear in halls of atonement was they wanted some they wanted a, a tank they wanted someone to sit there with all the ads on them not move and live while they kill everything right the downside to vengeance is you know when you go in you have high mitigation you have high damage sure but at and big pools you're gonna run out of stuff eventually right and the the downside to that on, in certain situations is that you have to run now in mdi on live servers when you're running it's fine right like you can run it's gonna waste a little time because things are gonna take a little longer to kill because things are kind of going everywhere but it's more important that you live and mdi do it that the fact that everything's about time they didn't you know i forgot which team i forgot the team name that actually used it but they didn't want that they didn't want ads to be running everywhere so they wanted an actual tank who just sat there and tanked everything and while they killed everything so and it worked out for them i mean they they, they pulled it off the first pool he kind of died on pool i think he may have went in a little too early and kind of got in position without his healer being there. But um, the second time around, they I mean, they did exactly that. The Bear Jew was doing 11k HPS by himself. Uh, he sat there and tanked all the ads and, you know, they died. So, you know, that's that's they, they pulled off what they wanted to do. So Bear definitely could have been in a situational category because that's what they used him for. And as for the Outlaw Rogue with the snapping mechanic that they used? So snapping, snapping is one of those things that we saw a lot of in BFA. We saw a, 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 a bunch of it. We saw a bunch, a bunch of snapping in BFA. Um, not really see that much this MDI, except for Necrotic Wake. They found a way to snap the entire top side of Necrotic Wake downstairs, which makes things a lot easier because you have a lot... You know, as a Vengeance Demon Hunter too, as well, you just, you know, there's certain things that it's hard to kite in that area without pulling a bunch of other stuff. So when you step it down to the second boss area, you have a lot of room. And so what they did, they, with the Rogue Legendary, again, a nice little cheesy strategy, because that's just the way tournaments work. Find all the cheese you can and heat it all up. With the Rogue Legendary, he would literally go up, he goes up there, gets aggro and everything, he tricks the tank, and then he dies releases down there everything snaps to the tank he stealths over grabs the orb and with the rogue legendary that makes him uh have 100 percent crit chance with coming out of stealth he grabs the orb pops that orb that little anima orb and he's doing 130k dps everything melts it it, it worked well for a few teams some teams it kind of fell apart um it's one of those strategies that high risk high reward type of thing to where if you pull it off it's it looks great it buys you it gives you a bunch of time um if it goes wrong you know gg no re so but yeah that was uh that was really fun to see stuff like that i don't mind right like you're, you're what, what you do what them figuring out a strategy of how to get everything to a spot and then using a rogue a situational class you know to come ahead with a good strategy that's 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 tournament play you're strategizing to win you know you're not using cheesiness of two classes you know that stuff that's just broken right you're using a dungeonal a thing that's in the dungeon and one class so i liked it it was a lot of fun to watch all right quick two questions before we end this video 
what is the biggest difference that you find from BFA Legion to Shadowlands? Well, I'm a BFA baby, so I don't, I can't really speak on too much uh, stuff from Legion. Uh, BFA was my first full WoW expansion, um, but from BFA to Shadowlands, when it comes to dungeons, um, I think the and biggest. Affixes. Well. Oh, the affixes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the biggest difference I believe that we're seeing right now on live uh, from BFA to to Shadowlands is uh, for one. You know, if you're a melee player, you know, <laughs> sorry about your bad luck, but you know, this is just not your expansion right now. Um, just due to the affixes that Blizzard made, just really cucks melee players. It just, you know, storming, spiteful. These are just things that literally are built to, you know, mess with melee players. Like, you know, and so that's one thing that I don't, I didn't really see. In BFA, like there wasn't a lot of affixes that were just, you know, completely against an entire group of, of classes, right? Like an entire like melee or range, right? Like quaking suck for range, whatever. It is what it is. Quaking suck for melee too. If you didn't spread out, you died, right? So it's like both kind of got it. Explosive, kind of, it's a little more like, not explosives, uh, vol volcanic. It was a little more shitty for melee because they had to move out of it are for casters other than you know melee who just kind of like whatever i'll just eat this and hit them on the way down like not a big deal but shadowlands they've specifically made affixes that shits on an entire like you know group of players which which i think is really shitty you know i just i don't think that's i don't, I don't think that's right but you know that's what we have to deal with so one thing that did shock me is that the it was the disc discipline priest that was its main duty was to take out the explosions when it was that affix between the discipline priest and the tank that was their main duty when there was an explosion affix yeah so with explosives um the one good thing blizzard did do with the affixes that rolled over from bfa was they did nerf them which was nice um explosions have they literally all you have to do is target them and an auto attack will kill them which is very nice uh, for that exact reason. Um, on live, if, if it's explosives are a part of the affixes while I'm running keys, I will literally group, get my damage off, let the damage dealers worry about killing, excuse me, killing uh, killing the mob, and I'm on explosive duty, right? So I, I think that's something that's how it should be. It should be, you know, something that is, an affix should be something that you have to work around, but doesn't become detrimental to uh, to one player right like you know i play with the warrior a lot on live right he's a good warrior he's in our mythic raid team you know he's good at m plus and last week was push week and it was spiteful and warriors are known for execute phases right so when mobs are low they're that's when they're best but when mobs start dying with spiteful because spiteful's just broken for melee right now it's just it becomes unplayable for a melee the warrior now with his no mobility ass has to run around in the time where he shines the most so you now you've just completely negated an entire class during for a whole week for a whole week of keys because one app you made one affix that specifically shits on an entire group of players right so it's like it, it becomes unplayable and this is where you have the imbalance in affixes right like you know explosives the change they made to explosive the change they made to bursting and the change they made to sank uh to um fucking sanguini i, I can't whatever the, the stuff that's on the ground you know sanguine or whatever it's all great changes because now they made them where the affixes you have to work around them but they're not detrimental but it's punishing if you don't pay attention to them, right? Like if a tank misses a couple explosives on a big pool, you're dead, GG, right? But they're still easy to kill if, you know, it's a skill cap thing. Or it's not like spiteful to where, you know, you do a big pool and your warrior wants to sit in there and start executing, he's just gonna get double tapped to death, right? It's just, it's just not fair. It's not fair to that specific, that specific class, so. Alright, last question. What should we expect going into the next round of the MBI with the knowledge that we have from this MBI? From this um, round? Well, if nothing changes, 
expect this priest fire mage there you go that's that's what you expect and vengeance demon hunter and vengeance demon hunter right uh your occasional bear druid you know if <laughs> if they want to play it but if nothing changes literally just go watch last week's mdi and then there you go that's this week's mdi it's going to be no different you know team skipping pride fools and stuff like that which is i again i don't expect that to go into the next tournament next week i i don't i, I don't see it um aw pvp got nerfed after the first awc certain things got nerfed expect to see the same stuff for mdi so um it just really depends on what blizzard wants to do and how much they're wanting to change between now and next cup right on all right signing off fox og baz his his link to his socials will all be in the description down below eminent signing off we out